Hello, everybody. And Claire. Hi, how are you? You're probably wondering where I was. I'm still in the office here, uh, working away, preparing for open day, which is great for tomorrow. Our in-person open day is happening tomorrow, which is brilliant, between 10 and 2. I'm sure a lot of people know that anyway. But we have a lot of people online here tonight. I'm looking forward to, I'm sure, your presentation. Uh, so everybody, are, you're very welcome here this evening. Um, um, and we're going to, Claire, um, Dr. Claire Bone is as a director of student support and development here in DCU and provides a really, really great presentation. I've heard it many times and it's really interesting and it's full of information. Um, so I'm going to hand it straight over to you now, Claire, and to get going um, where we've reached, reached the five o'clock uh, point. So we might as well um, kick it off anyway. So uh, we can answer, uh, ask, um, if people want to ask questions in the chat, uh, we, can, we can do that as well. And um, uh, answer them as we go along or else wait until the end until you finish Claire and then we, we, go, we go back to questions that are unanswered um, so I'll leave it or hand it over to you okay super thanks Claire thanks so much and great to be here this evening um, looking forward to being in DCU in person tomorrow for the first time after sitting in front of this screen for for the last year and, and speaking to nobody which is never nice what I'm going to try and do this evening for you um, and as I said I am looking forward to questions at the end is to give you some insight into what the university experience is like, particularly for first years. So any parents out there who have a son or daughter going into first year for the first time and don't really know what to expect, I think you'll find it particularly interesting. Those of you who may already have had children in other universities will then hear what DCU offers that others may not because we all offer different things. Um, and really, I think importantly, just to make you aware of how big a transition it is from secondary school into university. So you know exactly what to look out to out for and you know where to go if you think you need some help or you're worried about whether or not your son or daughter is settling in. So that's really the context of the presentation. I've been working in DCU for just over 21 years, uh, initially in the School of Applied Languages as a lecturer in German and Business Ethics, um, and then I moved into the international office and then into student support. I'm in this role about 14 years, so I've seen 14 years worth of first years coming through. Um, so I feel I've, I've some experience with them and we absolutely see the trends in terms of what works, what doesn't work, uh, what types of students may get into trouble and not settle as quickly, what quality ingredients to help students settle as quickly as possible. So I hope I can impart some of this to you this evening. I've also in the meantime, since I started, had two kids of my own coming through. So I've picked up some tips and tricks from them in terms of you know, what helped them settle in as quickly as possible. I think it's important to note that uh, unlike school, the university year is very, very short. So we all complained as, as parents when the kids were younger that they had three months hanging around and um, doing nothing for the summer months, but in university they have four. Now the beauty is that they can and should go off and work if they possibly can or explore the world or do whatever they're gonna do, but it is incredibly tight and short and, and really in a blink, you're at the end of the semester. So already this year, um, we're in the second last week of semester, which is quite unbelievable at this time of the year. Anyway, so I'm going to kick off. I was, I was just giving a little bit of time there for people to settle, but I'm sure you're all looking forward to your dinner and the late late show on the Friday night, so I'll get started. So first, just generally speaking, in terms of what DCU is and what it looks like in terms of some, some numbers. So we have five faculties across three teaching campuses. And um, you may have heard of the incorporation of St. Patrick's College and Matter Day into DCU a number of years ago. All of our programs are honours programs, so I get asked that quite a lot. Um, there are some three-year programs or options to be three-year programs. They are still honours degrees. We have a student population of 20,000 students, and that has grown quite considerably in the last number of years. Um, and even when I look at the first-year students, we had 4,200 first-year students come, up, come in this year, which was an increase of about, I think, 300 on last year. So every year we're growing and growing and growing, um, which obviously makes for a vi vibrant campus but it also makes for packed classrooms. 30% um, of our student population are made up of access students from socioeconomically disadvantaged backgrounds, mature students, students with a disability, and that could be a uh, mental health, could be a physical disability or a learning, uh, a le a learning disability. Um, and then we have students who, who study solely online before COVID was even the word. We have approximately 120 student-led clubs and societies, and they're very much at the heart of the, the great atmosphere that is at DCU. 70% of our students take part in paid work placement in third year. 
um, and we, we specifically make sure that we seek out pay placements which are paid. We don't believe in sending students out on placements which are not paid, although unfortunately for some of the very short placements, um, it can be an issue, but generally they're paid. 25% of our students take part in clinical or teaching placements or study abroad, again in their third year. Um, and we have approximately 1,500 rooms on campus with quite a few rooms around the campus in terms of private accommodation, um, which is provided to students. They're not ours, but they are very close to the university. In terms of employability, so 92% of our graduates are in employment or in further education within six months of graduation. And that's according to our latest graduate outcomes survey. So the stats are good. The students leave us really, and, and we will hear this from employers time and again, they, they leave us with a very sound knowledge of their discipline area, but more importantly, or excuse me, as importantly, they come out with a very real world knowledge and a very hands-on approach. They've been out on their work placements or they've been studying abroad during that third year or on their clinical and teaching placements. So they know what the real world looks like. So they're not just coming out with the theory, they're coming out with the theory and the practice. I mentioned we had three teaching campuses. So uh, DCU Glasnevin is possibly the one that people may know best. We then have St. Patrick's campus. It's about, they say 20 minutes. I'd give it 25 minutes, very comfortably walk between the two campuses, St. Patrick's and then All Hallows, which is literally just across the way. So students can move between all three campuses. Uh, normally you find students are based in one or the other, but not always. And they can use all the facilities, so the sports facilities, the fields, et cetera, in any of the three campuses. And then we have the sports uh, fields across the road from the class seven campus. In terms of numbers, and I've mentioned the first years this year uh, and the numbers have grown across the country. Uh, we had 4,200 new first year students who came in in September 2021, a little bit later this year, as you know, but they settled well. And then in terms of why I suppose this presentation, I feel is particularly important to a parent, particularly a, first a parent of a first time student, we do lose, and this is not just DCU, our, our retention rates are very good, but generally universities will lose about 8% of their first year students, which is quite a number of students. Now this could be for different reasons, and we're gonna go into that in a little bit more detail later on, but you're talking, you're talking about um, 300 students, which is a lot of students to lose in any one year. So in terms of that fabulous journey that they're about to embark on um, next September, when they get past the, the year that's ahead of us and then the leaving cert, and um, I will start with this slide and, and it's something I use with the students themselves as well. And I kind of say, OK, you know, what, what are you doing at university and, and why do you want to be here? So I'm going to throw the same thing out to you and say, well, why do you want them to go to university? Well, for, for sure, you want them to get a degree and get a good start in life. I think we're at that point in the country that we feel that basic degree is important in order to really kickstart your, your career and your professional life. You want them to build knowledge in a specific discipline that they're very interested in. You want them to learn how to balance all the demands of life, which you really do learn uh, while you're in college, and then develop all those skills, so decision-making, teamwork, leadership, time management, social skills, networking, professional communication, multitasking, and then somewhere in there, I'm sure you want them to have a bit of fun. Most of them, however, at the top of their list want to have fun, rightly so, they want to keep you happy and they want you, they, they want you to, to make sure that you're happy that they're, they're going to college, they want to get independence and leave home if at all possible, it's cool to be a student, they want to get a degree, and they want to get rich fast. There's that concept of, well, why shouldn't I? This, you know, this is now an entitlement. I, I'm entitled to a good education. I'm entitled to a third level education. And then, of course, they have a genuine interest in an area of study that they've chosen um, at third level. In terms of particularly first year, and I mean, I threw, throw these up and laugh at them, but the reality is there. They will get sick. They will pass exams. They will fail exams. They will earn money. They'll spend money. They'll fall into love. They'll fall out of love. That first year is an absolute roller coaster. And I've seen it with the thousands of students that have come through uh, since I started in DCU, but I've also seen it in terms of my own kids. It is just a roller coaster ride. It is so different to anything that they would have done before. And I'll explain why it is so different and what we could be doing to help them through that difference. And some of it is just they have to experience it to find their feet. So, in terms of the first year, we talk about this curve. Um, and again, dates are not yet confirmed for the CAO results, but we'll, we'll know them, I'm, I'm sure, at some point. But during that month of August, there's obviously that initial worry, you know, will I get my first choice? Will I be happy in the university that I've chosen? And then they get into college and they get their, their, they get their choice, whether it's first, second or third. The first four to five weeks are really very much about finding the rooms, finding the offices in the building, uh, understanding the library, understanding how to use the notes in the virtual learning environment. The problem is, though, as I mentioned earlier on, 
that the semester is so condensed, the year is so short that we have 12 weeks in any one semester. So if you're spending four or five weeks to find your feet and try and understand how to open the virtual learning environment and, and download the notes for the lecture, you're already on the back foot. So you really need to get in and find your feet really fast. Around that week five to six, we'll find a lot of students coming into us looking for help, looking for guidance, study tips, you know, anything to try and help them just make sense of the new world that they've moved into. I'm going to mention the date without going into any detail about it because um, it'll just get complex. But there is a date of the end of October by which a student needs to withdraw or defer in order, in order to hold the free fees, which most of the students will have. So free fees means either you're on SUSE or you're paying the 3000 registration fee. That in, fa in effect is, is free fees. If you withdraw or defer before the 30th, uh, 30th of October date, it changes slightly every year depending on the Friday, you can hold the free fees in order to start fresh the next year. So again, I'm going to leave it at that and you can throw questions in later on. Uh, around November, December, as I said, they do, you know, the question is it for me, all the assignments are coming in at this point, they're busy, they're wondering, do they, do they start too late? Are they going to get on top of us? Are they going to pass? And thankfully, a lot of them do, and most of them do get through and come then January, um, when they come out to the end of that roller coaster ride that they've been on, most of them settle and we have a million and one ways to help them settle into semester two where they're doing it all over again but this time they know how the virtual learning environment works they know where the library is they've got their student cards sorted they've made their friends and they begin to settle much more quickly so the types of challenges which and really i could have used this slide 10 years ago and use it again today i haven't but i could because really they don't change that much the challenges are the same so Definitely at the top of the list is that doubt about the program. So, you know, you saw some program, doesn't matter what it is. Um, you'll take, I don't know, take business studies and you realize that there's maths in it. And you kind of go, okay, maybe you should have thought of that a little bit earlier. But there can be that realization that once you actually, once the student is in the classroom and taking the modules, which on paper looked fine, and then they're actually having to engage with the materials, begin to doubt their own ability. Coping with a new learning environment, the biggest difference between school and university, and I probably don't have to say this out loud, but it's simply that lack of structure. In school, they start at nine o'clock and they finish at four o'clock or whatever time the, the day ends. And you know that geography is going to follow, history is going to follow English every day of the week. In university, you may have a, a lecture at 10 o'clock in the morning and nothing until two o'clock in the afternoon. One might be a tutorial, but they might be only offered every second week. So your weeks are dynamic and they change. And they're much more like you might only have 12, 15 hours contact in the classroom, but you're supposed to be doing double that outside of the classroom. So for them to make sense of how much time they need to be engaging with materials, what they should be doing with all these breaks in between their classes, it can be really, really challenging for them because they have to find that motivation themselves to get into the library. I wouldn't say from week one, it's a bit unfair. Certainly from by week three, they need to be going in and, and engaging with the material, looking at the notes, making sense of them, doing their research and keeping on top of their assignments and their in-class quizzes and tests, et cetera. I mentioned the 12 weeks, and I really think that is definitely one of the big things in terms of that challenge for them. There's a huge pressure then coming towards the end of semester. COVID has helped us hugely from the point of view that no longer are we um, in a situation where all the exams are offered in one week. We've very much gone down the road of continuous assessments, and obviously there are st still some exams. But that's been a huge um, help to the students that that pressure that is normally on them during the week or two of exams has definitely been eased. Loneliness is a big one and um, so we have students some, some some students come along and they have a group of friends already they're coming from school but quite a few of them are coming on their own and they have to literally just get, get that courage back again to approach people or or take part in some event that might be happening during the day or in the evening and actually approach people and start making friends but it can be quite a lonely place although DCU is quite compact all the all the uh, campuses are quite neat and you tend to meet the same people and get to know faces through the week. At the same time, walking around on your own is not much fun. They need to learn how to balance study, part-time work, social life, and I've seen this time again, uh, particularly with part-time work. We would recommend, and this is an international figure, about 15 hours a week should be manageable for some programmes. If they're doing a science program, for example, where they may have 38 hours contact in a week, but then the 15 hours is going to be a little bit more challenging, but up to a maximum 15 hours in most cases should be manageable. Problem is those hours creep in. So, you know, the local garage asks them to work a night or another day, or somebody's out sick and they have to fill in. So just that balancing of what's enough study, 
what's enough social life and what, what is enough part-time work. And then the financial pressure, and I am going to go, to go into a little bit of detail on the finances um, and what it actually costs to go to college. Okay, so every year we will obviously look at the stats, look to see who left, um, meet students as much as possible. They don't have to meet us, but we try and meet them before they leave if they've dropped up, dropped out. And the top three reasons for students leaving year on year is very simply the wrong program choice. So they thought it was going to be about A and actually it's about B and maybe they haven't looked long enough into the future. They haven't looked maybe at year two, three and four to see, well, maybe actually it's not exactly what I thought it was going to be in first year, but it goes in that direction when you go into second year, third year, fourth year, fourth year. So wrong program, not having done enough research. Um, and that's where I suppose you come in now. And that's when now comes in now, because you have a year before the program starts. If you go onto the DCU website and click any single program, it will give you an entire list of all the courses, all the modules in year one, two, three, and four, if there's a fourth year, so that they, so that your son or daughter can look through them and say, okay, so you know this is business studies, it's made up of A, B, and C in first year, then it moves in, then you can specialize, so they can see beyond that first foundation year where they need to get a little bit of everything, some of the stuff they mightn't like, but everything is covered to give them the foundations, and they then they might specialize at a later point. Not settling in is the second reason that students may leave. And then again, talked about that earlier on. And then, as I said, the financial pressure, particularly grant delays. So Susie, for those students who do get it, mightn't always come in in week one. So you need a little bit of a buffer so that they're not unable to pay bus fares and are unable to buy lunch um, when they're in the college in, in those first few weeks. So in terms of, of DCU and what we try and do to counteract all those things which are being thrown at them as they come into the college. So in the coming year, and again, we're waiting for all these dates to come through, but normally we'd have the uh, CEO results in the office out mid-August. And we actually, the last over the last two years, have started using the time between the offer, the, the time the student gets the offer, and the time they set foot on campus, which in our case next year is going to be 29th of, of August. I'll double check that date, I have it somewhere. Actually, I have it there, 29th of August. But we have a good two week period there where we very excited students. We said, OK, how can we use that to help them settle in, learn a little bit about the university from the comfort of their home before they have to face that first day on campus and walk around and get to know it? So we developed an online program called Discover DCU. It's consciously developed on their virtual, whoops, I'm sorry, on their virtual learning environment so that students can learn how to use the VLE. So the VLE and DCU is Loop. That's where they get their notes. That's where they might do their quizzes. In some cases, they do exams. That's where there may be uh, forums that they get to, that they have conversations about various topics which come up in class. So we consciously have it there. But what we're covering during that Discover DCU program are the basics which will help them get over all the tough stuff so that they can really hit the ground running. So the tough stuff meaning the technical stuff. So it goes into how learning at university is different. Um, that notion of using the time in between the lecture theatres, reading your notes before you go to the lecture so that you can engage more with the conversation in the classroom, etc. Getting to the campuses, again, very simple things, but for students who feel uneasy because they don't know where the, where the canteen is or don't know where the library is, that can be a problem. Understanding the learning environment and the academic structures, so what does the year look like? How, um, you know, am I going to have an exam? Am I going to have an assignment? Am I going to have a presentation? We introduce them to all our IT systems, which again, they need to be able to use very easily. Uh, we develop, we, we, we get them to engage in advanced study and learning skills. And we explain them how they can get involved in club and society life, which again is really important to make friends. That, so that week is virtual. They're doing that at home in their own time. They have about two weeks to do it. Um, but they've really at that point already got through a huge amount of information, which will help them settle much, much quicker when they come onto the campus. Then on the on-campus, which is program-specific orientation, is from the 29th of August. So program-specific program simply means that the orientation is going to be with, with the peers, with their peers, who are going to be doing the same program. So it means they have more time to get to know each other, get to know the lecturers and the staff that they'll be working with over the three or four years of their degree program. In terms of student support and development of what we do, so it is, as it says on the tin, we support the students right through their degree program and we develop the students. So it's that balance of helping them when they need help, but helping them develop to be, as they say, the best that they can possibly be through the time that they're at DCU. So again, this is tons of information online, but just give you an idea of what's there because 
I think it's it's sowing the seeds of information with you, so you know if there is a you know a, a point of contention, if there's a, if there's a point that, that a student is struggling with, you kind of go, okay, hang on a second. I heard there was there was a maths learning center, for example. <clears throat> so these are both online and face to face, uh, in groups or in one to one, depending on what it is and what's required. So we've general walk-in advice. We've a, we've a student advice center that a student can walk into about absolutely anything. And when I say anything, it means the bus, you know, number of bus to get into the town, to transferring programs, to needing help with study skills, um, and, and they will either refer on or answer the question for the student. With academic skills support, again, an awful lot of material was developed online in the last year, which has been a real support for the student, because what we've seen from looking at the stats is a lot of them study late. So, you know, if they need help with the structure of an essay, well, then they can go onto the resources and use them. So there's really rich resources online, but these are also in person. We have an academic writing centre where a student goes in with their essay um, or their question indeed and works through how to approach that particular assignment. We talked about, about programmes, if they're worrying, you know, where is it going or, you know, should, be, should they be in that programme? We explain what financial assistance we can apply, we can supply uh, to them. Um, we can point them towards career guidance. We have a counselling service. We can explain what transfers, deferrals and withdrawals are all about. We have a walk in uh, the student health centre, which has nurses and GPs. Um, students who come in through the, the uh, DARE or HERE programme all have a one-to-one -one needs assessment where they basically meet the, the uh, officer, the disability officer or the access officer, work with the students to say, okay, what do we need to put in place here to level that playing field for you? We've mature student support, so mature students coming in may have other kinds of, uh, of challenges in terms of maybe, struggling, may, maybe juggling the family at home or learning how to come back into study after maybe a, a break of five or 10 years. And then we offer life coaching, which is actually something with, which the students really enjoy. And it's very much about students who may have a particular goal. They want to get a first class honours or, you know, they want to be on the basketball team or whatever it might be. And we work with them in a one to one over four weeks with the life coaches and help them form a plan to achieve that goal. <clears throat> so the costs of attending and it's horrible. I, I look at this every year and it goes up every year, but I think everyone's aware of that. So what I've got here is the monthly cost of living uh, for a student living away from home and then the monthly cost living at home. So the bottom line, if we go down there before you pay fees, is about 12,000 for a student living away from home. Now, the obvious big one here is rent, and this is per month. So this is averaged out um, and we do it we do it nationally and then they do it per region. So th these are not kind of made up figures or our figures. Um, but you're looking at about 12,000 plus your 3,000 student registration fee. Now, if you look at some of these, like clothes, they're going to buy anyway. A phone, they're going to have anyway. Uh, they're going to have to eat. So there's, there's items in here which are very much about surviving. Uh, so don't get too scared. But the big one here is rent. Um, and then on the other side, and I can't see it because my screens okay perfect so on the other side uh, obviously you have no rent and therefore all these things are just literally about food transport phones etc so you're looking at about five and a half thousand euros and going back to what i said earlier on about working there is nothing wrong with a student working as i said up to 15 hours some can handle 15 some will only handle eight but some kind of a part-time job to begin to understand that skill of budgeting and appreciating money etc etc is really not a bad thing on top of that, just keep in mind there may be and will be other expenses depending on the program you're doing. So the student contribution fee, the, the fees as such, the free fees are 3,000 euros uh, in DCU. There may be gale co costs depending on the program that the student is taking. There may be placement expenses. Now, placements we do, uh, as I said, seek paid placements and they are largely paid, but even clothes to go into an office, be amazed. I had to kit my daughter out this year and realized she had no jackets and she had no, like all her shoes were runners. So suddenly there's money, there's, there's money to be spent there that you just might need to preempt. They absolutely need a laptop and um, they should, they need to be coming in one, with one in first year. It, it definitely should do them for the four years. Um, and then you may have to think of a deposit for accommodation, et cetera, as well. So that'll give you an idea. So I'm quite happy to let you share this presentation with whoever wants it afterwards, if, if it's of use. Thankfully, though, we have got some uh, source of funding within the university. So each university in the country gets a student assistance fund. 
um, and we got quite a substantial amount of money over the last two years because of COVID, the government upped the funding. And really it's very, it's not means tested. So sometimes students think, oh, I can't apply for that because it's, you know, I don't get Susie. It doesn't matter. So we have plenty of students there who, whose parents are both working, but there may be two kids or three kids in college and actually they're struggling. So it's for any student who's finding themselves struggling or, or whose parents are finding them, themselves struggling to support the student. Um, no, they're not going to go away, in a, go away on a fabulous holiday, but it might help with travel. It might help with paying the, those books. It might help them to buy a laptop. So, I mean, students can get, you know, 400 euros or they might get up to 2000 euros if there's a particular need and something's happened. Somebody's lost a job or somebody's got ill and the medical expenses have crept up. Uh, Childcare can also be covered under this uh, um, student assistance fund. So in terms of how you can help, um, and so I'm kind of a little bit of, of, I was preaching probably before my own two went, went through and now I feel, okay, this actually, a lot of this makes sense and I tweak some of it. So the big thing to start is just to keep an eye. So I mentioned that short semester. So those first five to seven weeks are crucial. They need to be settling down. So keep an eye to see, you know, are they happy going into college? Do they have, do, do they appear to know what they're doing? Are they talking about the program? Even if you don't know what they're talking about, do they look like they know what they're talking about? Try and get a sense of the level of engagement. You know, do they talk about what a tutorial is or that they had a tutorial even today? Or do they talk about the fact that this particular module was really difficult, uh, but that lecture is really interesting? Just get a feeling of, are they actually actively engaging very early on? You know, there, there is this thing about their adults, um, and most of them are 18, but irrespective of 18 or 17, they are still young and they're still heading into a very unknown territory. So, I mean, my, my advice to myself as much as anybody else would be to make sure you're there, just be there for them. So as much you, as you want to be, and I have to hold myself back texting every day to check how are lectures and did you go to everything? You know, you have to be careful because you, you could lose them, but just make sure you're there for them to literally talk to and listen, keep in touch with them. You know, if they're living away, make sure you make phone calls and send the texts um, and just, just be there be, for, for them to know that they can come back and talk to you if they are struggling in any way. Again, find out about friends, have they made friends, have they joined clubs, have they joined societies. Have a good look, all of our information on the DC website um, in Student Support is public, so have a good look through it to see what's there. And so there's amazing academic support resources, for example, the financial assistance will be there and the opening dates, et cetera, are, you know, they will change every year. So have a good look through. Also remember that DCU, as big as 20,000 students sound, is still relatively small and it's still incredibly personable. So in each of the programs you will have, and it's different versions of this, but you may have a personal tutor um, or you may have a year head. You'll certainly have lecturers who they will know themselves, but actually she or he seems very approach approachable. So I'll go and speak to him. Every program has a chairperson who's in charge of the academic integrity of the program, but also the well-being of the students. So again, they may, might be the person to go to. A, a safe bet if they don't know who to go to is the Student Advice Centre uh, to pop into to the support centre there or simply send an email and just remind them that these things are there, that if they're struggling, if they're worried, if they're wondering, is this for them? Don't wait. There's no point in waiting for week five and six. Having a chat will, is never of any harm and we can help them, just motivate them and, and make sure that we put things in place to help them through. There is the confidentiality, as you know, third party confidentiality. So we cannot talk to a parent about Joe um, who is unhappy, but we, but we can give general advice about what can be done. And we can certainly advise you to advise your son to go to A, B or C or to come in to me or one of my colleagues to meet with the students. So if the student wants you to come with them, it's fine as well. So if you feel OK, you know, they need a little bit of guidance. Actually, it'd be better if I was there. There's no problem at all. Any of the student support officers are more than happy to meet a student with their parent as long as the student is happy for that to happen. There's a web page which we have developed and update continuously uh, purely for parents and guardians of first year students. So again, have a look through that to see what's there. And um, just again, so it's in your mind that you know for the coming year. So it's dcu.ie backslash students, backslash, actually it'll come up from that, but anyway, backslash parents um, hyphen guardians. So hopefully you'll find some information in there. <clears throat> okay, and I suppose the big, <clears throat> the big message is I have rarely come across situations where a student can't be helped to get back on track unless they come to you in week nine of 12 and they've done nothing. So, you know, really make sure that they will come early, have that conversation. What's 
what's going on, what kind of help do they need, and we'll put together a structure for them. There may be opportunities to transfer a program if it's earlier, early enough. There may be possibilities to defer the year. We'll watch that 31st of October deadline. Um, and some of them will decide, you know what, I chose nursing. I've actually decided because I've been on placement for a week or I've talked to somebody who's been on placement for a week uh, that this is not for me. I want to withdraw. I want to reapply. And again, that's fine. Just watch your dates so there aren't any financial consequences. So I have put up my email address there. I'm more than happy to take emails at any time. So if there's anything there that didn't make any sense or you feel you'd like more information about, um, just send me off an email and we can have a chat um, and I can see can I help you in other way, any other way. So Colette, that's me. I'm not sure did anything come up in the questions, but again, more than happy to take questions. Um, no, uh, Claire, thanks very, very, very much for that. It was um, so informative. Um, there is nothing that came up in the chat at all. Um, oh. Yeah, well, that's you've obviously uh, done your, your job. <laughs> um, maybe somebody, we might give them a minute or two to see if they do, if, they do, um, if somebody wants to put a, a question in. Absolutely. Oh, somebody did raise their hand here. Hold on a second. Um, I can allow them, I can allow you to talk. So... You can, Mir Miriam, if you want to unmute. Here we are. Miriam, did you have a question? No, hands down. Hands down now. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, so something did come in the chat now. Um, let's see here. Um, uh, can Roche, from Roisin, please talk about fees for students coming from France, so Irish national. Uh, Roisin is obviously an Irish national, so fees coming for students. Well, uh, anybody coming from the EU, it's the same fee for everybody. So it's the three thousand euro that you would pay uh, for all non all EU nationals would pay three thousand euros a year, um, and that would be the same coming from any EU country. that answer your question, Roisin? What about American students? Uh, no, no, American students will pay the international fee. And you could find that on our website. So that would be dcu.ie forward slash finance. And uh, this, there's a booklet in there on student fund uh, on fees. If you go if you go into the HEA website as well, if you just if you actually Google free fees, it'll give you a full overview of what the criteria are for the three thousand euros. Mm -hmm. So you know whether it's the American student or the French student, it'll explain it quite well. There might be of help. Um, you have something there. Uh, excellent presentation. Absolutely, nationalities nationalities of students in terms of ratio. Nationalities so, of students. In okay, so we have seventeen percent of the student body is. Um, our international students and they're coming from, they're coming into the country to study in the university so they could be Erasmus students or they, they could be um, students coming in who are actually paying to do a degree in the university other than that I mean how many nationalities do we have who are we living have, in the country 110 or 20 I think it's around that Claire yeah, absolutely yeah. it is yeah so it's an incredibly mixed uh, bunch of students which is of course lovely I'm just typing in the finance uh, website. Right. And you mentioned another one as well, Claire, did you? Um, the HEA website, or if they just go into the look for free fees in there, it'll give them great criteria. It'll give them the exact criteria. www.hea.ie. Um, yeah. There was another question there now. Hold on a second. Um, can fees be paid in installments? Yeah. Mm. So. Uh, no, normally not in first year. So you pay 60% of the 3,000 in first semester, 40% in second semester. Um, as the year, as the students move on and have, I suppose, that financial record with the university, then they do look at, uh, at installments for specific cases. It's not generally done. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Italy and my daughter would like to come to university. Is it possible to have a room inside? I presume that's in, oh, inside the campus. Well, unfortunately, uh, it's a it's a random allocation for our, our accommodation and um, the book line, if it is for this year, it's coming a uh, book line will be open in February 2022 um, and it opens for about one month. And then in April, you're usually told if you got accommodation or not. 
And if not, then please do keep in the system because the people who did get it may not get the points or may go somewhere else and you could be back in, you know, getting an offer again later on in the cycle. But it is random, random allocation. It's not guaranteed. Um, how many students approximately from the EU? Um, I'd be guessing. It's not a. It's not. We don't. We don't. Not that many. Um. There is. There are a few. All right. But um. If, if it's from Italy now, I, I'd say it's a handful. For undergrad, anyway. For postgrad, it could be different. Um. But for undergrad, definitely, it would be just a handful. Although we're seeing more interest. We. I mean, gave campus tours to Spanish students only recently. Four of them who were very interested in DCU courses. Uh, so you're more than welcome to come over and, and get a campus tour. We'd be happy to accommodate you if you wanted to have a look around and talk to student ambassadors from courses that you're you're interested in. Um, there is there another open uh, on campus open day plan for next semester? Yes, uh, next April. Uh, I think it's the second of April. It's a Saturday, um, but that would be on our website as well. I'll put that in the, into the, the, the if you just um, I'll, I'll put that into the um, into the chat now as well. The website for that to find out more information. Um, just seeing if there's any more. Yeah, my my chat's gone funny. Yeah. I'm reading it um, down. Explain the again, please, Claire, the deferment withdrawal course deadline in late October and the significance of that. OK, so OK, so basically I'm going to take the student who's, pay, who's paying 3000 euros, which is the majority of the students will be paying 3000 euros for the year. And um, the full fee for a student, the cost of putting a student through a year in university is not 3000. It's averaging 8000. I'm picking these numbers rather than being exact, but it could be 15,000 if you're doing medicine, it could be 7,000 if you're doing business. But on average, the cost of putting a student through a year is 8,000 euros. So you pay 3,000, the government gives us 5,000. So we that's why they call them free fees. We're not paying the full fees for our kids at the moment. So on the 31st of October, or the 1st of November, we send a list back to the HEA, to the government, saying Claire Bohan, uh, Colette O'Byrne, Mark Brown, all these people now are studying at our institution, Give me the money, please. So DCU asked for the money to support these students. So we take that money. So it's gone. So, so the government have already paid for your son or for your daughter to be at our institution. If then you pull out on the 5th, the student pulls out on the 5th of November or the 10th of November, we've taken the money. So the government, so and you come back next year and you go off into UCD and, and UCD looks for money for that student. The government's going to say, no, no, we gave it to DCU last year. You have one chance. So we're not going to pay a second time for you. So the whole concept is as long as you as long as the student continues to progress from first year to second year to third year, the government will continue to give the university the funding. Um, but if a student does first year and then fails or stops and goes back into first year in a different college or even the DCU, they stop funding us and therefore you have to fund the student or the student has to fund themselves. If you withdraw before the 31st of October, we don't take any money from the university or from the student. We don't take any money from the government. You walk away, sorry, the student walks away and they can go back through the CAA for the following, to the following, in the following year, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? I hope. Yeah. And does Susie cover all the 3,000 fees? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Does he, does he, Students union membership of, I should know this off the top of my head, it's like 40 euros. For, yeah, around, around 48, 48, yeah. I think it is, isn't it? That sounds right. Um, yeah. Um, um, student pays. Okay, if doing teaching is at 3,000 per subject, no, it's 3,000 per year uh, for the for the course that you're doing, so it's not per subject. Um, uh, do students have to do an entrance test? No, it's all um, people enter um, via for, for most of the undergraduates, the CAO points um, or alternative exams, if you are talking about uh, EU exams. So it's the final year of high school exams. Um, so, and then you would have a number of points that you would gain and it's all done to the CAO. Um, so there's no, um, so it's based on your final year exams in school, basically, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Um, so then I hope, uh, the presentation applies to international students except of, of course tuition fees please advise absolutely so this is clear this, so this presentation is for all incoming students oh yeah absolutely yeah, regardless. Oh, yeah. absolutely yeah yeah. yeah 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 it does indeed and uh, we have a very good international office as well that does um do very specific uh, related uh, things for international students so i can give you their email also if you need to and their their website address 
Um, the slides will be available, Claire. You'll share them with me and I can share yeah. them as on. No um, the 3,000 a year, is that not including books? No, no. it's not. No, um, books would be extra. We have a great library, though, library facilities. Claire, would you mention something about that? Yeah, I mean, I, again, from my kids, my, I, I suppose it depends on the area. Law, for example, my daughter studied and she did buy a few books and they are hefty books. So she probably spent about 300 and she paid herself in the first year. Um, my son is studying in, in, in the economics politics area. He hasn't bought any books. They're all either in the library or online. An awful lot, like again, unlike school where you have to get the books and we all spent a fortune buying books for, for the leaving cert um, or final exam, depending on where you are. In, in the university, you tend to get notes up on the VLE or referrals for particular sections of books in the library. And some students love their own books in their hands. And again, in some subjects, it's maybe a book that they would need in their profession for life. So they'll pay the hundred euros. So they have it in their professional library at home. But really you won't find yourself buying a huge amount of books. No, I have any information on scholarships now. I don't know if that's sport or academic, but I can say a bit on both, I suppose. Um, sport, you might mention, is it Mart Martina? Is that sports scholarships? Might want to type in yes. Our academic scholarships are being reviewed at the moment, um. So I I don't really want to. Yes, sports scholarships. Okay, so there are two types of sports scholarships. And um, the first one is where you're graded according to your achievements and your potential and your needs, and you're given up to a maximum of three thousand euros in supports. And those sports could be subsidised campus accommodation or membership to the gym or entrance to a competition or nutritional workshops. Um, and uh, and separate to that is the CAO points concession sports scholarship. So that's where you would come in if your son or daughter is competing at a very high level. Uh, there's a number of places reserved for for those coming in and um, say that when I say a high level and talk about nationally or internationally or county or provincially um, and you'll come in and reduce points Now the points reduction for that would have been about 25 points no matter what course you came in on for the last number of years I'm presuming that's the same this year as well and um, but a student can if you're eligible you can apply for both but we have a great website as well so if you just google DCU sports scholarships you'll see all the information there as well as the contact details for all our development officers so for GAA rugby athletics etc and they'd love to hear from you directly if you feel your son or daughter is um, uh, eligible for a sports scholarship just you know you can ask them any question you like and they'll get back to you I'm sure and um, so I hope that answers your question and they'll be here on campus tomorrow as well if you want to add, um, there's actually a talk on sports scholarships in the, on, on tomorrow at the open day if you can make that I think uh, that's it. I don't think I missed any. Oh, one moment, two more messages. That's right. Oh, I'm coming tomorrow with my daughter, but I have registered for talks, but not received a notification for accommodation talk. Okay. And um, that could be me because that's, that's my area. So I am doing all that now as we speak. I'm sending off um, emails uh, for it, but like, don't worry about it. You'll get it. You'll get into the talk as well. And um, so um, I have been sending emails. Actually, I did send a lot of emails today. So for accommodation, maybe if you, um, I'll just put my own email in here as well, just in case uh, you didn't, um, uh, you know, it was missed by, I, I don't know how, because I've been downloading them as well. If it was just sent this afternoon, I might not have seen it, but I will see it. Um, but I'll give you my email as well. And um, if you want to email me directly and uh, you know, we'll get you into that talk. How can I see the documents that are required for my course? Letter of reference, for example. There to you. Yeah, so I'm guessing, and I could be wrong, but somebody mentioned American earlier. I'm wondering that's, that that tends to be something in the states is quite a big thing. We most I don't, I'm trying to think: is there any course in DCU that needs a letter of reference at undergraduate level? Colette, I don't know of any. Um. Okay, so that's a personal statement, as I resume your talking yeah, about. Yeah, I, I no, no, yeah. absolutely not. No, it's all done through points. Um. So there's nothing that needs a um. Uh, portfolio or there's nothing that needs um, uh, the only thing that needs an addition is the jazz contemporary music performance and um, but the rest is all um, it's it's a uh, it's all done through the points that you achieve as part of your final exams and they're converted into CAO points and, and then there's certain grades that you have to achieve as part of courses as well so for example if you're doing engineering you need to have uh, honours um, maths that you're doing at least a H4 um, that might mean anything to you but it'll have to be converted over to the American um, uh, the American subject grading and uh, so yeah, no, no letter of reference, but um, audition for the music course and then it's all done through the CAO then, the points. 
if you go into any of the programs and click on them, there's actually there's some really good explanations of obviously what the course is about, but also what you need to have in order to gain entry. So as Colette said, you might need, you know, if you're going to do language, it was you might need a certain level of French or you might need whatever it might be. So that might be worth looking at. And the international office is also a website mm -hmm. if it is an international applicants, applicant to explain what international applicants might need from the various countries. So that might be um, of use as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I've just put my email there if people want to just email me directly just to say that you want to go to the talk and I'll email you directly as well just to confirm that you have your spot there um, um, so that would be great if you can do that to the couple of people who want to come to the accommodation talk tomorrow um, the, will the, on, will the, um, the online talks the virtual talks on today will they be available to view online at a later stage I'm going to say yes um, I'm going to ask one of my colleagues here were the unibody talks recorded I can't, do you know what? I actually don't know if they were recorded or not, but I will find out. Oh gosh, were they recorded? I think they were, I hope they were, because I know with the platform they were on, that facility wasn't available last year, but they might've changed it for this year. So I'm hoping that they are. And if they are, then they will be on our website, that's CAO website. There's lots of recordings there already. And um, so that would be the um, www.ie forward slash CAO. That's our website that has the recordings um, of, of um, talks from all our open days in the last year. It would be podcasts that students are talking about their course as well. There is video uh, recordings there, webinars, panel discussions that happened just the last few months. They're really interesting. There are students talking about the courses, there are lecturers here talking about their courses, and they're really useful for anybody who needs to get more information on the courses that we offer here in DCU. So do make use of that. I'm going to put the website in again. So that's the CAO, the DCU CAO website. How long will each course talk be tomorrow at the open day, hoping to get around to multiple talks? Um, okay, so um, we've asked them to be 30 minutes or less. I know with engineering, they might be a little bit more because as all the courses are, all the engineering courses are it, it contained in the one talk. Um, so they could be around 45 minutes instead of the usual 30. Um, yeah, but the, the, the guide is on our website as well. I'm going to put in that CAO um, website because you can click into the guide from that as well. Just go in there. Yeah, so 30 minutes or less for the majority. I think for engineering might be around 45. Um, sorry, we're traveling to Dublin tomorrow from France. Okay, signed up for 11 a.m. talking engineering school. How do we get information specific on aviation and business studies courses? Okay, so if you've just signed up for engineering, that's fine. You might be able to sign up tomorrow um, for a later um you know business or engineering talk if you haven't already done so if there's room available i know the business talks were very um oversubscribed so there might be you know if there's room tomorrow we'll, we can just find out on the day basically if you haven't done it um if you haven't signed up for them today yet but um or else you can just you know that we can we can get you into the building to talk to support people from the support stands and uh, so they'd be located in the business school also but look, we have about 250 student helpers um, directing people around the campus tomorrow. They're all wearing red high-vis jackets. So please, and they'll have the guides with them and they, they know where to direct you once you arrive. So do make use of asking our, our students where to, where to go as well. Okay. We do have more questions coming in. Yeah, just a question about whether we're doing a similar talk tomorrow. Yeah, there's one at 11.15 and one at 1.15 um, on site. Uh, confirm the number of dare places set aside for each course. It's five percent, isn't it? Yeah, we five percent. Five percent. Five percent here. Okay. Um, sorry, ten percent here. Apologies. It's ten percent, is it? Oh, here. Sorry, here. As I mentioned, dare, as in here. Yeah, here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So dare. Um, this, um dare is five percent, and the access is ten percent. Uh, here. My son can't attend the on-site tomorrow due to illness. Can we email? To, do we know? No, you don't. You don't need to email. That's fine. Thanks for, for saying it, though. I hope uh, your son gets better, though. I really do. Um, are you giving a similar talk? Yeah. yeah. Will this talk be on your website? This talk has been recorded, so you will put it on the website. Yes, we will indeed. And obviously tomorrow we'll have time, for plenty of time for questions and answers. I think it's dry and, and the talk has been given in a nice large theatre. So my plan is to stand outside after the talk and spend as much time as possible with, with parents if they have questions. Yeah, that's really good. There's lots of stuff happening on campus tomorrow. So hopefully you'll be able to enjoy, enjoy the day. Yeah, yeah. 
and lots of places to sort of go buy, you know, get a quick snack and things like that as well. And, you know, a bit of entertainment and clubs and societies and also, so it's going to be great fun. Um, I think that's it now. I think that we've, I think we've answered everything and unless anybody else has another message or another question, we could leave it there, Claire. Yeah, well, look, my email address is on the presentation anyway, Colette, so I'm more than happy. Yeah. And if I can't answer the questions, I'll be banging them over to you. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Claire, thanks so much. Not at all, lovely. Thanks, everyone, uh, oh, for coming. And Colette, thanks for your help. Yeah, oh, sorry, one more question there. Can my son attend the open day tomorrow if he is not vaccinated? No, I'm sorry, unfortunately, he cannot. Um, uh, so he, he can go around outside the buildings, but if you want to get into the building, then you will have to be vaccinated and present a proof of ID also. Um, so I'm sorry that he, he he won't be able to attend. He won't be able to attend a talk inside the building if he's not vaccinated. Um, new world, okay. huh? A new world, I don't know, it's desperate. Uh, thanks, uh, everybody. And yeah, absolutely, Claire, thanks so much. I'll solve them. Thank you. See you um, tomorrow, all right. See you, Claire. Bye-bye. Bye, Claire. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. See you now. Bye-bye.